thank you uh, to the organizers for giving us this opportunity to present uh, our work on WISPLC. So WISPLC is, uh, stands for Weekly Interacting Slender Particle Detection using LC Circuit. It's an experiment that is housed in Hamburg. And in this talk, we would uh, show you what this is all about. And this is uh, based on uh, our work together with uh, Dieter Hunz. So as uh, the, the theme of this meeting goes, uh, dark, dark matter particle candidates range uh, from a very small mass range, as in a fuzzy dark matter, to uh, heavy WIMPs. Uh, so WISPLC will actually look for axion-like particles, which uh, fall in roughly this mass range. And in the next slide, I would like to show you the current projected sensitivity of WISPLC before we get into uh, the details. So this is the current status of, of the axion uh, photon parameter space. Uh, and WISPLC is this contour right here. And as you can see, this will probe uh, an axion mass starting from uh, 10 to the minus 11 electron volts up to uh, 10 to the power minus eight, slightly above that. So what is this experiment based on? Um, so first, uh, most of you are familiar with what axions are. Uh, they are uh, light bosons, uh, pseudo Goldstone bosons uh, that arise in pitchy queen symmetry breaking in order to invoke, in order to solve the strong CP problem. And axion-like particles, unlike axions, themselves are not bound by the tight phenomenological relation. They can interact with uh, uh, some uh, standard model particles, including photons, and uh, their coupling to photons can be expressed in terms of the electric and magnetic field. Now the premise of this work is to look at how the inhomogeneous Maxwell's equations are modified in presence of an axion field. So the, uh, the uh, Maxwell's equations are modified uh, in terms of a couple of terms, but as you can see, the, the, more, the most important term here is the time derivative. And this is because uh, for a, a nano electron volt axion mass, for example, uh, the characteristic uh, wavelength uh, of, uh, uh, of a nano electron volt axion would be about 10 to the power 5 meter, which is much larger than the, than the size of our detector. So we can treat uh, this axion field as a coherent oscillating scalar field. So this means that this uh, gradient of, of the axion field, this term, will go away. And the, and the time derivative depends on the local dark matter density. So what do we have here? We have, we, we have established that we can use uh, axions as a coherent oscillating scalar field, and uh, the, it will oscillate uh, with this frequency. And in the presence of an external magnetic field, axion will act as a source for the, for the current density. And this is given by this term, and this can induce a, a magnetic field perpendicular to this current density. And this brings us to the detection scheme of the WISPLC experiment. So here we have a warm bore, and these are the magnets. And this B field here, it will convert the uh, axions in the Milky Way, where it's based, uh, to a displacement current JA, and this oscillating displacement current will then induce a toroidal magnetic field. And this magnetic field will drive an, uh, an electromotive force, which will then generate a current, which will then be picked up by this loop. And then there is an LT circuit right here, which will amplify this. And using this pump, afterwards, it could be detected by a magnetometer made of superconducting device. 
Okay, <clears throat> I will follow from here. Um, so this is the design of the magnet, which is um, a soloidal magnet with two coils, and it will produce it will produce a static B field threading the center of the bore as pointed by the the arrows, and then that will induce the axion source um, current density oscillating in the same direction, and that. Um, we also drive another tor toroidal B field perpendicular to B0, and we can pick that up um, as a magnetic flux by using a superconducting loop um, perpendicular to this BA and across the cross section of the magnet. So, on the right hand side, we have um, the equations that we use in the paper. Uh, we can calculate the BA using uh, BS of R integration and then the flux uh, of axion that we pick up is we can integrate it over the surface of the loop. And then with oscillating flux, they will drive an EMF across the loop and also oscillating current, and we can pick up the current with our detector. And this is our uh, magnet. It is a 14 Tesla cryogen-free magnet system. Um, it has a room temperature bore, which is uh, 125 millimeter in diameter and a 755 millimeter in length. And the rest of the, the magnet is in cryogen uh, temperature. On the right hand side, it's a, a simple simulation of the magnetic field. We can see that in the center, it reaches 14 Tesla. And in the small region, it can um, reach a static little region of um, the full field. Um, a console simulation of this uh, is presented on lighting, um, lightning group two for the poster session by Johannes. And the center of this bore, oh, I'm not present, I'm not present. The center of the bore um, will be used by another experiment um, called WIS-5, uh, will be presented tomorrow by my colleagues, uh, Yakum and Joseph. Okay, uh, we can simplify the equation for the, for the flux by summarizing the BSFI integration and the, the surface loop integration with a form factor, we call the specific form factor, normalized by the uh, maximum B field and the volume of the magnet. And then uh, the flux we pick up will be described by five parameters, the first two of axion properties, and the last three of experimental parameters. We can, uh, we can call the, the last three the comparison factor. We can compare them with two other um, axion experiments with, with the same uh, philosophies. Uh, using toroidal magnets instead of solenoidal magnet with uh, either one or multiple uh, magnets. If we compare the experimental properties and also the comparison factor, we can see that which cell C is able to capture about um, three orders of magnitude higher flux than the rest. This is our squid current sensor. A squid is short for superconducting quantum interference device. Uh, it is an uh, integrated two-stage current sensor uh, developed both by uh, Magnicon and PDB Berlin. Uh, we measured, we characterized it in our lab with the refrigerator at three Kelvin. It has a bandwidth about two megahertz, uh, flux transfer coefficient about 200 and 2500 microvolt per flux quanta at flux lock loop. That means uh, for every flux quanta um, the squid receives, you will give out two, uh, 2500 microvolt of output signal. The, the measured flux noise is about one micro micro flux quanta per square hertz, which is close to the state of the art of the noise level. Um, to detect the current, we have two detection schemes. So um, the current sensor is represented in a blue circle, which is a squid uh, exactly coupled to an input circuit and input coil called Li. So for broadband detection, we directly connect uh, the pickup loop to the uh, to the, the current sensor. And then the flux will be transferred inductively to the squid uh, throughout the whole um, bandwidth of the detector. So the flux transfer efficiency is about uh, 10 to the minus four, but there's room for optimization here. For resonant detection, uh, we connect uh, the pickup loop with the LC circuit that will pump up the, the magnitude of the, the flux in a short bandwidth. Um, and the amplitude will be increased by quality uh, factor of Q, uh, which theoretically can be as large as 10 to 11, but we have to consider the oversampling at lower frequency. So as a trade-off, we choose a benchmark of 10 to the fourth. 
Um, I want to talk about the noise because a noise of a squid is well studied, but when you couple it with input, fact, uh, input circuit, it's a um, little bit complicated. So the squid has two sources of noise. Uh, one is voltage noise, and one is the current noise in the circulating, um, circulating in the superconducting ring. So normally, oh, yes, normally um, the voltage noise is represented by two mega V. Uh, Boltzmann constant, uh, the operation temperature, and also the resistance of the Joseph's junction. However, with the input circuit, there is uh, contributing uh, additional noise temperature. Um, and the calculated noise temperature is about 10 millikelvin, which is neg negligible compared to the operation temperature. For the resonant case, there is additional um, input capacitance as part of the LC circuit, and also uh, resistance representing the losses. And we can look at the noise as two parts. One is squeeze source noise, which is from the, the voltage noise and the current noise and their correlation value. Um, and this one is calculated around the same order of magnitude as the, the flux noise we measure in the lab. The other one is uh, the johnson nyquist noise from the losses of the, the LC circuit, which is the dominating noise. Um, however, this can be significantly reduced by using superconducting resonant designs, uh, such as uh, Devlin et al. Um, they measured about minus 90 uh, dB VPP at uh, 0.7 megahertz, which transferred, converted to flux noise, is negligible compared to um, the flux noise that we measured. So the, so the sensitivity of WSPLC uh, depends on the exion coherence time, which is which depends on the exion mass, and the signal to noise ratio. It depends whether on or not the uh, observation time is uh, comparable to the coherence time or not. So when the the observation time is short, it's shorter than the uh, exion coherence time, and the signal to noise goes as square root of t. And the signal could be considered uh, coherent. And when it comes to uh, reducing the variance of the detector noise, you actually need longer integration time. And this, in this case, the signal can be treated as a uh, continuous uh, function, a band-limited continuous function. And the, and the noise the power can be computed using an Nyquist Shannon profile, and uh, the signal to noise uh, goes as t to the power one for it. And this is the two sigma sensitivity of WISPLC. C. So, as you can see, as here there are some experimental parameters. Uh, so, this kappa uh, corresponds to the flux transfer efficiency. And the C is the comparison factor, which is actually plenty large for uh, WISPLC compared to similar experiments. This is the dark matter velocity dispersion. This is uh, mass of axion. This is the dark matter density. This is our observation time of uh, rough 100 days. And this is the flux noise. And here you see the, uh, the parameter space plot for WISPLC. So WISPLC is uh, quite sensitive, and it, it it covers a mass range of 10 to the minus 11 to 10 to the minus 8 with a broad mass range. And even though it cannot uh, access the, the canonical QCD band, it can, uh, it can probe uh, other uh, theoretical models which expands this landscape, such as the, the trapped misalignment uh, or photophilic axion models. So the blue contour here, this corresponds to the projected sensitivity of WSPLC when it's operating in the broadband scheme. And when we turn on the resonant detection mode, then you gain quite a lot in, in sensitivity. Um, um, the integration time for the, the broadband is um, 100 days on this plot. And for the resonance, then you have to consider the, the number of um, bands that you have for the, the tuning and also the time of the tuning. So we end up with uh, about one minute per band. And then, um, then your um, effective improvement of the sensitivity for the resonant is about um, 500. 
Um, and um, there's some in shaded and lighter colors. That is uh, with improved readout that was um, optimization of the flux transfer efficiency and a better coupling with squid. So the current phase of the experiment, um, we have the, the 14 Tesla magnet. In commissional phase, it has successfully reached full field. And the next step will be integrating the, the squid um, detector into the magnet. Yeah, we don't have um, head of scope and um, other cavity experiments here. We only have um, the ones that we're comparing to. Yeah. Uh, so I just noticed that the uh, this uh, center you have is Okay, this um this data for Abacadabra is according to their round um two, I guess, mm -hmm. of their experiment. And if they reach the full band, I'm not sure if I missed their new update. But um the main difference between Abacadabra and Swift Sub C is first we have the design of the the magnet. Uh, Abacadabra is a Toyota magnet, so the, uh, your axion field BA will be threading the center, similar to B0 here. So then you pick a, a put a pickup loop in the center. Then that limit the, the size of your pickup loop. Actually, you are limited to the board size. And for um, with Sub C, then your um, pickup loop size is limited by your magnet design, but it has more room to grow. You can see that um, it has room to spend. So in terms, we have bigger pickup loop size. And so that is also shown by this um, form factor, GV here, that per um, volume of a magnet, per a magnetic field, we are able to pick up more flux than Abacadabra. And then also in terms of the volume of the magnet and um, B field, so we have um, we can pick up more signals. Okay. I'm just wondering what the darkness and highest must have been the best stuff. I imagine that the resonance of case that is something related to the resonance of the sound because in a global case, it is get moderately worse and worse than the highest of the darkness is not. Okay, um, that is the. So for the broadband case, we showed um, even the signals after the bandwidth. So that's decaying because uh, we have reached the bandwidth over there and the signal is decaying. And for the resonance, um, we only pick a narrow band because all, uh, first, a squid doesn't perform well when you are close to the bandwidth or even after. So it doesn't decay like this, but at um, flux or loop, it will decay even worse. Second, for a resonance, you have number of bands and you have limited time for each band. So we want to um, only um, include um, the, where the signals are strong.